Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Brianna Jones. And I'm Seth Carpenter. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Athletics. Senior Chase Mart sent a deep ball enough into right field to score Dalton Sinkfield on a walk-off sacrifice fly to push Troy past Louisiana 5-4 in the Sunbelt Series opener Friday night at Riddle Pace Field. Sinkfield kicked off the ninth with a single up the middle before Sattler Goodwin walked to put two on with no outs in the frame. The Trojans then moved both into scoring position with a textbook sacrifice bunt from pinch hitter Tyler Head. After the Cajuns initially walked Logan Cerny to load the bases, Smart stepped up and drove in the game-winning run to send the Raging, Raging Cajuns riddle pace crowd home happy. After falling behind 0-3 in the first, Troy responded with single, single runs in the second and third, then a two-run fourth to take the lead. Rigsby Mosley drove in the run of the game with an RBI single in the first. Mosley and Sinkfield both finished with two hits in the contest. Troy racked up seven runs on nine hits in the first two innings of, of the second game to grab an early lead on its way to a 10 to 6 win to clinch the conference series over Louisiana Saturday afternoon at Riddle Pace Field. The Trojans started the game with four consecutive singles to plate a couple of runs. They, they went on to score two more runs on two more hits in the opening frame. A three-run second highlighted by a two RBI double by Sadler Goodwin put Troy in complete control of the game. Goodwin finished the game two for five with three RBIs and two runs scored. Manning early ripped a couple of RBIs in the first and fourth innings. One of six Trojans to drive in at least one RBI in the game. Drew Frederick effectively iced the game away with his team leading fifth homer of the season, a solo bomb in the bottom of the seventh. Frederick reached base in all five appearances, going three for three with a couple of Watts, an RBI, and three runs scored. After picking up a pair of wins on Friday and Saturday to take the series, the Trojan baseball team then dropped the final game against Louisiana Lafayette on Sunday. Nick Brooks has the story. The Trojan baseball team kicked their weekend off with an exciting walk-off win Friday night and a dominant game on Saturday when they jumped out to a 7-1 lead after two innings. But the Trojans failed to bring the brooms out as they lost 4-3 against Louisiana on Sunday. Uh, we got the first two games. We played very well Friday and Saturday. And we played a good game today. We really did. We didn't do a lot of things terribly wrong in the game. Uh, we didn't get enough hits at the right time, but uh, give them credit. I thought their want to was a little more than ours today because they had lost the first two games. And uh, we matched it close, but not quite enough. Uh, but they earned the win. We didn't walk them. We didn't hit them. You know, they got hits to score their runs. Grant Stewart started the day for Troy and pitched a shutout going into the sixth inning. Grant was terrific today. It's the best start he's had for us. Uh, he went six plus. Uh, he gave up the two-run homer on a windy day. Yeah, you know, so I mean that that give the guy credit. He got the ball in the air and hit it out of here. Uh, but he pitched very well. He was ahead in the count quite a bit. He was down in the strike zone. He had some strikeouts. He had a low walk total. So he did a really good job. And he gave he did all a starting pitcher can do. He gave us a chance to win. He he did his job. He got deep in the game with a chance to win. Unfortunately, we didn't score early to give him some comfort. Every pitch he threw was a high-stress pitch. Troy answered first in the series finale, taking a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the fifth inning, but failed to retake the lead after a two-run home run by Louisiana in the top of the sixth. We were 0 for 3 in our shutdown innings, and that's, you know, when we score, we got to come out with a zero to have a chance to win the game. We were 0 for 3 today, and that's something that winning teams do. If you're going to win the game, you're going to shut down those guys from scoring after you score. And give them credit. Like I said, we didn't put them on base to give them runs. They earned their way around the bases swinging the bat. Although Troy lost the series finale, Coach Mart said he was happy with the series win and ready to move forward on the road this week. Nick Brooks, Trojan Sports Now. Trojan baseball team traveled to Tuscaloosa to take on the Crimson Tide Tuesday and picked up a win in a grand way. Sophomore Reed Smith blasted a two-out grand slam in the top of the second to help propel Troy to an 8-4 victory over in-state foe Alabama at Sewell Thomas Stadium Tuesday night. Smith hit an 0-1 pitch off the scoreboard for his third career homer and first career grand slam. Troy followed up the four-run frame with a three-run third on its way to its first win over the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa since 2007. Kaylee Hussey smashed a walk-off double in the bottom of the eighth inning to give Troy the extra innings win over UTA in game one of the Sunbelt Conference Series Friday afternoon at the Troy Softball Complex. 
Hussey hit a double to deep left center that scored Madeline Porter, who led off the inning with a single down the third baseline to give Troy the extra innings win. UTA got on the board first in the top of the first inning when Reagan Wright hit a sacrifice fly. Bailey Taylor answered with her fourth long ball of the season that tied the game up in the bottom of the second. The pitchers dueled through the next five innings of the game with both teams holding each other scoreless to send the game into extra innings. And Leanna Johnson shut out UT Arlington after scattering five hits and sitting down five batters to earn the win in game two of the doubleheader. The Trojans scored in the bottom of the first inning after Snyder singled to right center to score a Truett who led off with a single to give Troy the lead once and for all. Troy plated an insurance run in the bottom of the third inning when Snyder hit a single through the left side to score Madeline Porter, who led off the inning with a double up the middle. Jojo Valencia suffered the loss after allowing two runs off of eight hits and two walks. Lana Johnson recorded a 0.32 ERA and picked up three wins after sitting down 11 batters and scattering 12 hits. Kelly Hussey added four more RBIs to her resume after recording four hits, including a double and a three-run home run. The Trojan softball team then came into the weekend on a hot streak, winning their last four games and outscoring their opponents 28-10 in those games. After taking the first two games, the ladies look for the sweep in game three. Nick Brooks has the action. The team took the field for game two of a doubleheader on Saturday, looking to do something never done before in school history by sweeping UTA. The team completed the sweep with a 2-0 win in Game 3. I'm just really happy about the grit our girls are showing. We had a really tough week a couple weeks ago where we went on a five-game losing streak, and for them to bounce back and go on a seven-game win streak, I think that just shows the fight that this team has, and just really proud of them. I mean, we, we've had really good pitching, good defense, and timely hitting the last seven games. After a 2-4 and four start in conference, the team has turned it on of late, sweeping the past two series. The Sun Belt's a dogfight. I mean, you, you've got to show up every single weekend, and I think – you know, we, that was our fourth, and I think we're playing really good softball right now. So we're kind of in the middle of conference play, and I expect us to continue to do the things that are making us successful. But, I mean, it always feels good when you get a sweep. I mean, that's just a really hard thing to do in the Sun Belt. So to get that two weekends in a row, one on the road and one at home is, is huge. The team took the final game of the series 2-0 to zero to extend their winning streak to seven straight games, including six in conference play. Two key players for the Trojans have been pitcher Leanna Johnson and outfielder Stephanie Snyder. I'm just preparing, you know, off the field at practice and with Coach Day in the bullpen um, and just coming out there and wanting to get the job done, knowing that I, my defense is behind me always. And it's just, you know, going out there and just doing what you have to do to get it done. So my teammates did a really good job of having quality at bats before me. I've been under the ball a lot recently, so um, Coach Smart told me to keep my hands up and see the top piece, and so I did, and that's all we got. The team has four more home games this week to wrap up their eight-game homestand. Nick Brooks, Trojan Sports Now. Troy Softball looked to keep one of the hottest streets in school history with seven straight wins this week as they took on in-state rival Alabama State. Story Bradley shows us how the team kept it going. The sound of eight straight victories. The Trojan softball team extended their winning streak in dramatic fashion Tuesday night thanks to a walk-off three-run blast by Kaylee Hussey, earning a 5-2 victory over the Alabama State Hornets. Yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> we were talking about when you go on a, a winning streak like we're on, you just kind of win in different ways. We've won big, we've won a little... A little bit of everything and we've had a couple of we've actually had a walk off in our series this weekend so I think our girls are really confident about our ability to win in the late innings and that's kind of something we pride ourselves in and we did it I mean that seventh inning the execution was amazing I mean putting the getting a walk and then those two bunts and with and then Hussey coming up with that huge hit was just textbook softball so I was really proud of them. The Trojans took an early lead in the first after a bases loaded sack fly by Stephanie Snyder and an RBI ground out by Kaylee Hussey. Starting pitcher Annie Willis would hold the Hornets to just two runs in six innings of work, where she recorded five strikeouts in just one walk. Leanna Johnson then came into the game in the top of the seventh, where she recorded two strikeouts and allowed zero runs, recording her 17th win of the season. When you have the pitching staff we do, I mean, we, we've really got that two-headed monster in Leanna and Annie, and I, I feel confident about pitching either one of them in any game. And so we thought Annie would do a good job of keeping them low scoring, and she did that. So she gave us a chance and felt really good, and Leanna came in and shut the door. Annie did a great job of keeping us in the game. Um, 
our offense, you know, they did good. Um, when I came in, I just knew what I had to do to get, you know, us back in the dugout to score and run. You know, Chapman always does a good job at shortstop. She who uh, filled to the ground ball. But um, I just knew what I had to do to get a job to keep my team in the game. With the game tied going into the bottom of the seventh, Kaylee Hussey, who recorded two hits after her first at bat, knew what pitch she was looking for. She sent the Trojan faithful home happy, ending the game three for four with four RBIs. My first at bat wasn't very good, so I kind of went off that. And my other three at bats, I, I knew what I was looking for. And, um, you know, in the seventh inning, uh, my teammates did a good job of uh, getting quab after quab. And I just got up there and I knew what I was looking for. And Stuart Bradley, Trojan Sports Now. The Troy men's tennis team faced Georgia State in the Sunbelt dual match and fell short 1-4. The Trojans came close to clinch the doubles point in the beginning, but did not convert that into their advantage before heading into the singles play. The duo of Palawa Antuna and Jackie Duan came short in doubles as they were defeated by McFarland and Hussey 6-4. At the number two spot, Oscar Michelet and Andy Romero defeated their opponent 6-2. Unfortunately, the last deciding point in the doubles play was not in the favor of the Trojans. Christopher Tasker and George Poyetos fell against Georgia State duo 6-4. At the number four spot, Christopher Tasker was close to clinch the second point for the team, but the match was unfinished due to four collected points from Georgia State's side. Troy men's tennis team fell short against a belt opponent, Georgia Southern as well, on their senior day 4-3. The Trojans were not able to clinch the doubles point and dropped several tough singles matches in three sets. The last home game for the Trojans men's tennis team program this season started with a hot start from Georgia Southern's side. The Trojans came up short in both the doubles matches, while the third match remained unfinished. The team went into singles play where Christopher Tasker secured the first win of the day. At the number two spot, Palaio Atunia was able to clinch another point in two sets against Stefano. The Trojans were very close to making a comeback and to, got four points needed in singles, but the last win from Manuel Bernard was not enough as Jackie Duan, Oscar Michalik, and Antonio Selma fell short in three sets. The Troy men's tennis team was able to clinch the win in a midweek match against Jacksonville State 4-3. The Trojans improved its record to 16-4 before heading to Sunbelt matches against Louisiana and UT Arlington. Having the new doubles partnership of Giacqui Duan and Manuel Bernard, they're able to defeat August and Blanchard 7-6. Oscar Michalek and Palawa Antuna defeated Vallejo and Vishenek 6-2. Christopher Tasker and George Prietos were short at number one spot 6-4. Therefore, the Trojans clinched the first doubles point in their last three games. In the singles play, Palawa Antuna went back to number one seed where he defeated Kapala 6-0, 6-4. Manuel Bernard was moved to number four spot and defeated Vishenek in a fast manner. The Trojans went with the 3-0 lead from the start, and the last needed win came from Oscar McKellick, who was able to win his match in two sets by defeating Vallejo 6-3, 7-6. Christopher Tasker has suffered the first loss in number five spot after winning six straight games. Troy women's tennis team was defeated by South Alabama 4-1 last week at the Lunsford Tennis Complex in the annual in-state rivalry showdown. South Alabama's Patricia Martins defeated Troy's Junshi Go to secure the victory for the Jaguars, Troy fell to 8-8, eight eight, while South Alabama improved to 15-2 on the year. John Shi Go and Peju Shi defeated, the, defeated Martins and Passan 6-2. Ting Ping Pei and Mahia Mihaljevic secured the doubles match point for the Trojans 6-4. In the final doubles, Maria and Celia Estevan defeated their opponent 6-3. The ladies then bounced back from a loss on Wednesday to defeat Arkansas State 4-1 on Friday at the Arkansas State Tennis Complex in Sunbelt Conference play. Troy's Jung Wee Juo defeated Arkansas State's Amelia Garamont 6-3 and 7-5 to secure the victory for the Trojans. Troy improved to 9-8 while Arkansas State fell to 3-9 on the year. In doubles, Celia Montevero, Estevan, and Maria Casas Blas defeated Craven Thong and Garamont 6-2 in a very decisive doubles match. Shungwi Juo and Peju Shea were defeated by Mastival and Detlava 6-3. Matia Mahavalek and Ting Ting Pei defeated King and O'Brien to secure the doubles match point for the Trojans 7-6. And this week, the, the Troy women's golf team traveled to Memphis, Tennessee to, to, to compete in the Memphis Intercollegiate. Bianca Lobauer and Nicole Laura led Troy to a fourth-place finish at the Memphis Intercollegiate, which wrapped 
Up Play Tuesday at the Ridge Ridgeway Country Club. Four Trojans finished among the top 25 individually as Troy turned in its third best score of the season. Troy Track and Field wrapped up competition by setting two school records in the final day of the Florida Relays held by the Percy Bill Track. Overall, Troy set three school records at the meet, had one athlete place her name into the record book, recorded nine season best performances as well as set a new personal record. In the 800 meter dash, junior Gemma Finch notched the fastest time in Troy's history as she finished the race. And so to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a preview of the Trojans baseball team's matchup against Texas State. But first, I sit down with women's tennis, Matia Mahavalek. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now.